So let's just get started. I'll just navigate through the study, reading along, pausing only when I need to uh, clarify, but other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory. You guys ready? Here we go. Have you ever heard of the teaching known as replacement theology? Replacement theology. Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you haven't. Um, if you haven't, sit back and I'll explain it to you. I asked the second question. Have you ever been taught to understand that the church has replaced Israel as God's chosen people? And then I say, as Tevya, the milkman of Fiddler on the Roof, would say, sounds ridiculous. No? Nope. All right, that's my poor imitation of Tevya. If you've ever seen the musical Fiddler on the Roof, um, you recall that the main uh, character of the story is this father, this um, kind of ordinary Jewish man by the name of uh, Reb Tevya. And uh, it's a story about how he and his family experience all of the ups and downs of what it's like to live as a Jewish person in a certain time period gone by. It's, it's, I can't remember the exact era that it's um, connected to. But throughout the story, he's constantly having these uh, soliloquy moments where he's talking to the viewers, and then he's also talking to God at the same time. And so um, earlier on in the movie... Uh, or the, the the musical movie, he he asks kind of, all these kind of questions about tradition, you know, when he, he says things like, you know, sounds ridiculous. No? Okay. So, uh, it's a very nice movie slash musical. I highly recommend it. It's a little older. It's kind of dated, but um, I'm sure you can probably find it at your local uh, movie outlet there. All right, let's keep going through my commentary. However, unfortunately... This type of teaching, what we're going to be talking about, it does exist and actually thrives in some Christian circles. As ridiculous as Tevia might say it sounds that God has replaced Israel with the church, as ridiculous as that idea might sound to some of you, it actually does exist. This is not a straw man theology that I'm creating that doesn't really exist. This is not a... Um, uh, an imaginary scenario that you were playing make-believe like Mr. Rogers or something like that. Um, this is the real deal. It really does exist. I asked the question, where would a Christian get such a peculiar viewpoint. I say peculiar because, I mean, if you think about the history of God and Israel and the place that Israel enjoys in not just the Bible itself that we carry around as Christians, but in the plans and the purposes that have been spelled out in the Bible, particularly with Israel and through Israel, I mean, this is really peculiar that any Christian would come to this particular perspective. I say in my commentary, and if God is done with Israel as a people, does this mean that once a Jewish person, I put Jewish in brackets there because really it's anyone, but particularly a Jewish person, once they abandon their old incomplete ways of understanding God, and once they come to faith in Jesus, does this mean that his association with things Torah must likewise be abandoned? Is this what replacement theology is trying to imply? Is that if God has replaced Israel with the church, right? He swapped out people groups. He took Israel out of the picture and put, put the church into the picture. Then if there's no room for Israel or no room for uh, a Judaism, which we're going to talk about in this commentary, then um, what happens to Jewish people who do come to faith in Jesus? What is their expected response? What what lifestyle should they be leading, right? How should they be condu uh, conducting themselves? Let's keep reading. For example, I say in my commentary, must Judaism and a Jewish person's cultural identification with being Jewish give way to Christianity and leading a noticeably uh, Christian, quote-unquote, lifestyle instead? Understand the, the nature of my question?